In the final part of this problem, we're going to use, uh, you, we're going to find the work or the energy configuration, um, also known as energy store, also known as a work, a uh, different way. And we're going to use, still use our electric field that we found in the previous parts of the problem, notably the first video. So we have a, an electric field on the outside, an electric field on the inside. So the way we're going to find the work is we're taking these little infinite, infinitesimally small pieces from infinity all the way to where um, that charge distribution is and uh, we're, we're pulling those infinity uh, to and forcing them together to make that sphere. And so we're gonna have to do an integral from infinity to zero, but since we have a threshold here at the uh, surface of the charge distribution, we have to split it up at R uh, equal to big R and uh, do our different, um, uh, different uh, electric fields that we have here. So this is what we have here. And the first step we can do is just look at these uh, volume elements here and we'll just go ahead and turn these into uh, we're going to integrate over uh, all, all space so as you can see I already hinted at there's only going to be one integral here so we have an integral um, from uh, infinity all the way to zero split up in half but uh, these infin these uh, uh, volume differentials are just going to be equal to r squared 4 pi dr there is a d theta d phi sine sine theta d theta d phi uh, portion of this but since there's no thetas uh, or phi's in here those will just integrate into four pi you can check that if you want but i'm just going to go ahead and jump down here and just save us a bunch of steps so this next step that we can do is uh, we'll just go ahead and make these substitutions another thing we can do is just pull out all these squared terms here remember these are all squared so don't uh, miss anything and um, pull those constants out in front. So that's what we're gonna do now. So we started off with a epsilon naught over two, and here's all of our squared terms. We had a, uh, let's see, a k squared. Um, we had a pi that was common to everyone and a four that was common to everyone. So we have a four pi. And then uh, we also had a, a four squared common to both. So that's an epsilon naught, or sorry, uh, that's a 16. Then we also have the epsilon naught squared. So we'll have an epsilon naught squared common to both of those. And I think that's most of them for now. We'll find out as we move forward. We will pull out an r to the eighth because of this r to the fourth squared right here. And then we have our integral from infinity to r. And uh, so now it's just an r to the fourth because of the one over r squared squared. And then we have our r squared d, d r there and plus the integral from um, uh, r to zero now. So we have an little r to the fourth, r squared dr here, all right? So let's do some bookkeeping. Let's go ahead and knock out these epsilon knots. We have um, this four can turn this 16 into a four and that will turn into an eight there. And I think that's most of what we can do here. Uh, we can cancel these r's out and these will turn to a little r to the sixth here all right so i think we have enough to move on to the next step so what we have here is a k squared pi uh, eight to the epsilon naught now we have a bracket we can evaluate our integrals so we have a big r to the eighth so we and this evaluates to a negative uh, one over r from infinity to big r plus an r to the seventh over seven, r to zero, and bracket. And now let me scroll up just a little bit to help me out here. Um, <clears throat> let's see here. Nothing happens with the constants in front, it seems. We'll evaluate this integral. So it's just an r to the eighth times what? One over r minus zero. That's what one over infinity is. And we will go ahead and pull out this one over seven but if that's r to the seven minus zero. All right, uh, let's go ahead and, so this r will cancel out with this one, turn that into a seven. Things are looking good. Oops, that is an epsilon naught. So now we have, um, let's see here. This is r to the seven plus r to the, or yeah, uh, r to the seven plus r to the seven divided by seven. And that is of course equal to eight r to the seven over seven. And let's see if I can keep this on one page. Uh, these eights can cancel out. Eight, eight, and that looks familiar. That seems to be exactly what we were looking for. K squared pi r to the seventh divided by um, epsilon naught seven. So that's 
uh, what we got on the first part of the problem, and that's what we were trying to figure out, is uh, if we can get the energy configuration the same one in two different ways, and that was exactly what we did.